how do you spell victory? When you look back over your life and you declare it to be victorious, how much of that victory will you attribute to your life in Christ? On Sunday, Pastor Rico, we gathered Mm -hmm. and we celebrated the greatest victory that the world has ever known. Absolutely. Not only did Jesus die, not only was he buried, but on the third day, he got up. He got up. With all power in heaven and earth in his hands. And that's the God that we serve. Yeah. And what a time we had on, on Sunday, being able to gather with the saints Man. in the house uh, and as well as saints online. Yeah. And we were blessed. Yeah. Blessed beyond measure. Listen, it was our Super Bowl. <laughs> That right. was our day. Right, <laughs> right, right. It's a great time, man. And and we win. We win. Yeah. 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 We're going to our game knowing. Listen, we win. <laughs> we already got the victory. <laughs> yeah. And that's and that's the word we're talking about tonight. Yes. That's the word we're lifting up, victory. Yeah. Right, we're in Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. Let's go ahead and dive in. Let's go, man. I'll, uh, I'll start, start us off, family. Again, we're in Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 8, if you want to join us in your Bibles. Uh, verse 1. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him, him being Jesus. Verse 2, and very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, who will roll the stone away for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them, and they said nothing to no one, for they were afraid. What a day. Listen, man, the way you approached that, I literally saw myself in that scene. Praise, that was great, man. Praise the Lord. That was good. Praise the Lord. Yeah, but here we are. Yeah. Here we are. The the the, the scripture, I love how Mark just lines this yeah. out for us. Yeah. He's saying, yo, the Sabbath is over. Yeah. Um, traditionally, the Sabbath would end, as we would understand it, on our weekly calendar on Saturday evening. Mm-hmm. So they would have gone, went, went and bought spices that night Correct. and then gotten up early Sunday morning, yeah. perhaps even before the sun was up, yeah. because they arrive at the tomb at sunrise. So they would have had to left before. So they, they come with the spices that they've purchased. Yeah. They've used their resources to purchase these spices to come and prepare or anoint the body of Jesus. Yeah. We when we were talking about this before we got started, you made reference to spices. Yeah. And and how pivotal yeah. this this process would have been for them to do, you know, not only as service to Jesus, but yeah. in a real sense worship. Absolutely. To Jesus. Talk to us about Yeah. I think we we should really understand that in Jewish culture, you know, this was the process, you mm-hmm. know, there was no such thing as embalming the body during that time. Mm-hmm. So the significance of the spices was to preserve the body, to preserve the stench, the smell, mm-hmm. um, knowing that he had just been crucified. He is laying in this tomb. This was their way of honoring him right. by bringing these spices to lay upon the body to make sure it didn't give off a stench, yeah. didn't give off a smell, not realizing he wasn't there. Right. You know, even though he told them. You know, I'm coming back. Right. So even in their preparation, even in them wanting to honor him with these spices, they realize, wait a minute, this body ain't here. You know, and I think you touched on something that was really good. Yeah. Um, Realizing that when they got there, the stone was rolled away. Yeah. So it wasn't so much that he got out. Right. But you made a a really good point. It was so much that they wanted, God wanted them to go in to see that he wasn't there. Correct. You know? Yeah. And I think that's something that's super significant. Um, even in the midst of preparation mm-hmm. and preparing what was well intended yeah. for them to preserve the body, realized that the body wasn't there. And he told him, listen, I'm coming back. 
you know? Right. So it's so interesting. Um, and it makes me think like sometimes, you know, we can find ourselves when God will grant you a promise. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do this. And then at some point you forget or it drops off of your radar mm-hmm. um, or it slips your mind and you'll go on about your day as if he didn't make the promise until, oh, shoot, the promise was fulfilled. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So it's so interesting. It, it's cool because going back, the first thing, the first words we hear from these women are their concern. Yeah about what would stop them from fulfilling the act of worship that they committed to do. Correct. In other words, we're going to go bless the Lord. Yeah. We're going to go worship the Lord in this way. Just pay our final respects. Right. We we heard what he said, yeah. but he also went in his tomb. Mm-hmm. So the first problem we have is who's going to roll the stone away? The, the scripture's like, this, this, this tomb yeah. is large. Yeah. It's a family-sized tomb, which means that the entrance to it would have to be covered by a very huge stone. Correct. So they're like, yo, who's going to roll the stone away? Correct. But the thing that I personally appreciate about these women, and I really want to get into the role that women played in, yeah. in the life of Jesus and in his ministry. Absolutely. That they said, who will roll the, st- who will roll the stone away? But then they went. They went. Yeah. <laughs> they went. Yeah. So sometimes you'll see a problem, yeah. and the recognition of that problem will keep you from moving forward. Correct. Not who I, I said the the right. <laughs> right. We're right. still going. Yeah. Who going to roll the stone away? Right. You know? I don't know. Let's go. Let's go. We'll figure it out when we get there. Yeah. And and that's that in and of itself is an act of faith. Absolutely. And encouraging all at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I don't know how God's going to do this. Correct. I don't know how I'm going to be able to worship God to the level and to the degree that I plan to. Correct. But I'm just going to show up and figure it out. Correct. And when they get there, we find that an angel has rolled the stone away. And one thing that always catches people up or, or hangs people up about studying the Gospels is it seems like one Gospel says something different from yeah. another Gospel. Oh, that's good. Yeah, take right? on that. Yeah, that's good. And so so Mark's account says one, mm-hmm. right? Matthew's account says one angel. One, yeah, yeah, But yeah, when yeah, you yeah. get to Luke's account, Luke says that there are two angels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So which one is it? Right. Is it is it one angel? Is it two angels? Yeah. Who's there? Who's not there? Right. It's a, it's a game of who's on third, right? <laughs> <laughs> but that's good. the answer is yes. Yeah. Right? Because there are two angels, but what Mark and Matthew see fit to do is draw attention to the one who's to speaking. The one. Correct. So, so correct. when we look at the gospels in totality, yeah. uh, the, the synoptics being Mark, uh, Matthew, and Luke, and then John being an additional gospel, yeah. we get a more full, a more, more robust, more yeah. robust, a more clearly developed yeah. picture of what happens in the life and ministry of Jesus Absolutely. over this three to three and a half year span. Yeah. So we see that there's one angel there, yeah. and this angel has rolled a stone away, and he's in the tomb to give them a word of encouragement. Mm-hmm. I love the way Matthew says it. Why are you looking for the living amongst the dead? Amongst the dead, yeah. Why did you come to a place where dead stuff is, mm-hmm. expecting to see something living? Correct. The, the, the door of the tomb is not open so that Jesus could walk out. It's open so that you can walk in correct, and see that the faith you've placed in the Christ you serve is still the faith that you can stand on and walk out on to this day. Absolutely. Regardless of any situation that you find yourself in. Yeah. Regardless of the circumstance, regardless, regardless of what you may see on TV. (laughs) Right. what, what, What politics are saying, whatever situation you find yourself in, um, let this be an encouragement for you that, the same God, the same Jesus that died for us is the same one that got back up. Yeah. That's encouraging, man. Yeah. So you mean to tell me, regardless of where I find myself, mm-hmm. you mean I can get out of that? Yeah. You mean I can rise up again? Yeah. Because it wasn't, he just didn't get up for him. He got up for the whole world to see that yeah. this is an example for you to take and to you for you to utilize as well. Yeah. Not just for me. Like, I got up for you. Yeah. How yeah. can, like, let's apply that <laughs> to our everyday life, you know, whether you're at work, whether you're at home, in a marriage, school, friendship, family, whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. Apply that to where you are and realize that it was for you. Yeah. Right. It was for you. And, and that's the theme of the whole series. Yeah. We serve an unstoppable God. Correct. And one, one kind of reminder of this, again, when we think about the Gospels, if we look at them in totality, again, we get a more full, more yep. robust picture right. of what we're reading. Like, if you look at the same account in John, in John yo, that's like good. John 20, yeah, maybe 6, maybe 7. Yeah, you there. You in the ballpark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, 
when they go into the tomb, this is Peter going into the yep. tomb now. Like the women have gone and, and come back yep. and reported this to Peter, and Peter and John race to the tomb. And the funny thing is, John is clear to say, No, I beat him. Yeah. That's pride. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, that's straight that's up pride. Right, He's like, right, I beat right, him. We right, ran, we right. ran, but I got him. <laughs> I got I was sliding on him. Anyway. <laughs> Four two <laughs> one. He, right. Don't uh, do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do but, it. <laughs> but when Peter goes into the tomb in John 20, yeah. he sees that the linen that had covered Jesus' body is there laying that lay, laying in, in crumpled. Correct. But then apart from it, he's very clear to say that there's the face cloth mm -hmm. that was neatly folded up. Neatly folded, yeah. It's it's the picture of when you go to like a fancy dinner. Yeah. And while you're away to step away from the table, you put your napkin down on the table to let the waiter know, I'm not done. Correct. I'm not done. That's good. When Peter walks into the tomb and sees a neatly folded face cloth, he is reminded yeah. the enemy meant this for evil. However, God meant it for good. Yeah. The unstoppable Savior, even in his death, burial, and resurrection, reminds us. Yeah. I'm not done. I'm not done. There's still more work to do. Absolutely. There, there, there's still food on the table. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's good. There's still food to eat. There's still stuff for me to do. That's and maybe that, to your point earlier, yeah. is the encouragement for somebody. Absolutely. Maybe you have been buried. Yeah. Maybe that situation has come to a place where now it looks hopeless. Yeah. But will you allow the God of heaven and earth? Yeah. The God of your yesterday. Yeah. The God of your today and the God of your tomorrow. Yeah. To be the God who says, I'm not done yeah. in that circumstance. Can I be transparent? Please. Yeah. Yes, sir. It reminds me of my own testimony. Um, yeah. And I think I've shared this in several spaces. Uh, my parents had me at a very young age, mm. specifically at the age of 17. Um, so I was considered statistic. Um, so many people wrote us off, uh, said that I would never accomplish anything. I would never amount to anything. Wow. Um, and these were people in the church. Mm. Um who at one moment were um, frowning upon my mom and my dad yeah. um, because of this act and them being so young. Um, and, and of course saying the, you know, unfortunately what we often hear, babies having babies. Mm -hmm. um, and then my mom has me, even in the midst of contemplating, should I keep them? Wow. Um, God was still involved. Mm -hmm. She has me at a young age. I, I go through life. Um, still with that statistic hovering over me, he'll never amount to anything. Yeah. Um, and then I, I graduate junior high, I graduate high school, graduate college. Now I'm married. Yeah. Now I have a son, I have a wife. Yeah. And let this be an encouragement for someone who's watching and also what we're reading right now, God wasn't through. Mm. So even when man counted us out, mm -hmm. even when man threw in the towel or just told you, you know, throw in the towel, you listen, it, it's, it's downhill from here. Yeah. You might as well just go ahead, close it up, stick a fork in me, and I'm done. Yeah. God said, no, I have a, a bigger and better plan than what you're hearing and seeing from other people that don't even know that I'm in the midst and I'm I'm at work. Um, nothing but the grace of God. Yeah, man. Nothing but the grace of God that I can look back and see God's hand in every chapter of my life. Mm. He wasn't finished there was still work that needed to be done and i i leave that knowing man if he did it for me right he could do it for you yeah yeah that's amazing man yeah. like the the times when even to ourselves it looks like it's over correct that'll never happen for me no. that that dream that I thought had come from God. Yeah. It must not be from God. Yeah. Because it has not come to pass. I'm still waiting. I guess. <laughs> and then you you fall into the trap of comparison. I've seen him do less with more. Yes. So the more that I've given him clearly must not, clearly must be an indication that he doesn't want to use me to do that. Right. He must want me to give up. Right. He must want me to fail. Be reminded. Be reminded. That's that the good. God that we serve, man. Unstoppable. Unstoppable. It's not that we're unstoppable. We can be flesh will fail. Absolutely. And, <laughs> and and you can bank on it. <laughs> yeah. 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 But we have been granted Absolutely. The power of the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. The scripture says the same power that, the same power that <laughs> went into a tomb and raised Jesus from the dead is the same, same power, power that, that I, is yeah. in, in and at work. Absolutely. In the lives of God's people. Absolutely. In the lives of believers, in the lives of the church. Yeah. That is an encouragement. Absolutely. Especially for, for that individual who feels disqualified. Yeah. 
who feels like my history is too jacked up to even fathom the idea that he would use someone like me. Right. That he would even use my life to be a testament of his power, of his protection, of his mercy, of his love. Mm. And we're confirming by reading this that no, yeah, he can use you too. Yeah. Where would you find yourself? Even with whatever you have, you've been left with. I love it. He can still use that mm -hmm. and multiply it. Watch what he can do. Right. Watch what he can do. That's so good, man. Because you, you've heard it said that God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the, the call. call. Correct. But the question is, and now I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about Moses. Uh-oh. When he called Moses and commissioned Moses and commanded Moses, the first question he asked Moses is, what's in your hand? What's in your hands? Yep. You feel inadequate. Yes. Moses ran down an entire list of why he was not the man for From the job. A to Z. <laughs> He's like, I'm afraid. I don't speak well. <laughs> They're not going to believe me. Correct. I got to start, like all these stuff. Yeah. What's in your hand, man? What's in your hand? All right, I just got a staff. That's all I got. That's all I got. Will you take what's in your hand? Right. And let God use it to advance his plans and his purposes yeah. through your life. God may want to take your life in a completely different direction. Yeah. And when he wants to do that, maybe the best thing for him to do is shut down everything else. That's good. But when he does that, you feel like life is done. Of course. But be reminded to look into the tomb. Yeah. And receive the message of the Messiah. Work I ain't done, done yet. yet. I ain't done yet. I ain't done. There's more work to be done. Yeah, there's more work to be done. Yeah. That's good, man. That's great. <laughs> That's great. That's, That's great. That, that, that blesses me. Yeah. Because um, I've had done moments. Absolutely. I've had moments where I thought people were done with me. I've had moments where circumstances seemed like there's no other way. Yeah. It seemed like the book was closed. Yeah. And what I thought was a closed book was the end of a chapter. Yeah, absolutely. And now I'm still reading it. And I'm reading pages that God had written. Correct. That I had no idea. I'm right. like, is, is this the appendix? He was like, no, you just, you thought the book was closed. <laughs> I still got commas to add. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, like a period. <laughs> yeah. You, 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 exactly right. Yeah. You put commas where I put period. You, you put periods Here's where, where I, I put commas. commas. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Oh, he's up to something. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you said something when people have given up on you or, you found yourself in that space. Mm -hmm. um, those moments when you've given up on yourself, or yeah. you wanted to give up on yourself. Yeah. Um, I think those are the moments where God, and even the scripture talks about, you know, in our weakness, mm -hmm. his strength is made perfect. Right. And it's amazing how we serve an unstoppable God that can literally step into nothing. Mm -hmm. What we can view as nothing. Yeah. I have nothing left. I have nothing to offer. Life in itself has depleted me of everything. Yeah. I have nothing else to give. And here we have an unstoppable God who can step into your nothing situation. Yeah. And then things starts to change. Yeah. yeah Doors yeah. start to open. Yeah. Connections start to, you know, it's we can go down the list on and on, but it's just like, man, how often do we find people and find ourselves in those situations? Yeah. When we feel like we have nothing else to hang on to. And when we receive that encouragement, when we receive that 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 push, yeah, Jesus gives us gives us a command. Yes, he does. And and we find it Come right on. here in verse seven. Come on, this is so good. He's like, you were hopeless, you thought it wouldn't work, yeah. But now that you've seen that it's working, and you've seen that I've risen from the dead, and you've received the the call and the encouragement, yeah. That what you believed is now come to pass and is now true. Right. Now you have a responsibility. Verse seven. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. Stop. Stop. Two words. Go. Go. <laughs> tell. Tell. <laughs> go. Tell. Yeah. You came here in despair. Yeah. You came here in despondency. Yeah. You came here in doubt. Yeah. You leave with faith. Mm -hmm. You leave with hope. You leave with encouragement. But that's not for you. Yeah. Two words. Go. Go and yeah. tell. Yeah. That is the pattern that is to characterize the life absolutely, of the believer absolutely you can't keep it to yourself it's hard it's hard to keep it to you yourself. got to go tell somebody tell bro. somebody yeah. yeah yeah why do we keep our faith to ourselves though i think i think it's it's a few things yeah. one of the one of the things that i've kind of witnessed for myself is one fear um fear of what they believe mm -hmm. um two is will they listen yeah and three is um, will they receive it? Because mm. you can listen to it, but will you actually receive what I'm telling you? Yeah. And I think, out of I think out of those three mm -hmm. areas, I think sometimes we we people 
we struggle. Yeah. You know, I, yes, he did it for me and I'm excited. My life is healed. The, the you know, he he changed it. He mm -hmm. he moved it or whatever the case may be. But it's just like ah, oof, well they listen. Yeah. Well they receive it. Oh, oh, I don't know. I don't like talking to people. You know, I shy up. You know, you start creating these scenarios in your head of, you know, what if and, you know, but it's kind of hard not to say something. Yeah. Keeping it to yourself, like it's like um, it's it it, it, it it well at least for me it kind of drives me insane. Yeah, I want to tell the world how great he is. Mm -hmm. I want to tell them how he healed my life. Yeah, how he transformed my mind. How he gave me a clean like I want to tell them. Mm -hmm. Like it's hard to kind of just keep it to myself. Yeah, like I've I've literally witnessed myself purposely not saying anything. <laughs> and then eventually it'll come out. Right. And it's just like, okay, all right, let me just stop doing this. Right. Just let me tell you what just about this man named Jesus. You know, <laughs> like it just comes out. And it's just right. like, but there are people out there, mm -hmm. individuals who find themselves in those scenarios where they just like, I don't know. Yeah. You know, will they believe me? Yeah. Will I be politically correct? Right. When, it, I, when I lose some friends. That that's what I'm concerned about. Yeah, like what, you know, when I lose some relationships, you know, will 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 the 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 followers will they you know decrease? Yeah, I, I don't know because I'm putting myself out there. I'm mm -hmm. I'm, I'm being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. with, I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to mess up my rap. You right. know, because people right. know me in the streets. If and, I if I identify with Jesus, uh, they might not rock with me yeah, no more. Correct. I don't want to know. I don't know if it's worth the risk. They might leave me. They may leave me. If I if I tell my girlfriend or I tell my boyfriend, yeah, yo, I follow Jesus. Yeah, you might not want to be with me no more. Right. So you mean to tell we can't Netflix and chill? Right. Right. Yeah, babe. Yeah. Yeah. We got to go a different direction. We got to go. Yeah, because I've been called to live differently. Yeah, I'm set apart. Go and tell it. And 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 this is the part that, that really blesses me, man. Because he entrusts this message. Yes. To three women. Yes. So good. All three were there for his crucifixion. Two were there for, for his burial. Yeah. But he entrusts, he entrusts this message to women. Yeah. Now... Contextually speaking, culturally speaking, the testimony of women wouldn't wouldn't have been seen as reliable yeah. by comparison to the testimony of a of a man. Of a man, yeah. But if you follow the ministry of Jesus up to this point, yeah. you can see quite clearly that he is committed to upsetting Absolutely. or or reversing people's perceptions of how God shows up in the culture. Yeah, the cultural norm. Correct. Yeah. Like this this upside down kingdom. He's like yeah. Y'all don't trust women. I'm going to entrust women to be the first mouthpieces of my message. Right. That I've risen from the dead as I said I would. Correct. I will use women to tell those who follow me where to meet me next. Correct. And they go and they're met with disbelief. They were. Initially. Yeah. But their persistence to convey truthfully what they had seen, heard, and experienced right. compels the disciples yeah. to get up and move their feet. Yeah. The fact that Jesus would choose to use women blesses me, man. Yeah. Because I think of how many times personally God has used women to challenge me in yes. my faith, to grow me in my faith. My mom mm. was a superintendent of the Sunday school. Wow. Every Saturday, I would see her in the living room with the with the standard Bible commentary. Standard. It was it was a book that all the Baptist churches used. Yeah. It came out quarterly yeah. so that every Baptist church in the country <laughs> was learning the same Sunday school lesson every, every Sunday. Sunday yeah. <laughs> then I would go to Sunday school. Yeah. And all of my Sunday school teachers mm. were women. Wow. Miss Sly. Miss Moore. Dropping names. Let's Ms. go. Starks. Let's go. I am not who I am. Yeah. As a man of faith. Yeah. If God not had not entrusted his message to women, right. if no one had taught my mom the faith, if no one had taught my Sunday school teachers the faith, I don't know where I would be. I don't know who I would be. I don't know what type of life I would be living. So when I see scripture and I see that they are following in the model or in the mode or in the footsteps of women that Jesus has entrusted his message to, Oh, I'm I'm good. So, Jay Patrick, are you telling me that God can use anyone, regardless of gender, to get His point across? Absolutely. Okay. My voice almost went too high. It was it was good I, though. I had to catch myself. It was good though. <laughs> I'm about to say, <laughs> <laughs> you was out there. <laughs> but absolutely. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Th- this idea that that women need to be silent. Yeah. We should do a whole section on this because those those verses about Paul need to be contextualized. Absolutely. And if you understand Absolutely. where he's coming from contextually, correct, you're like, oh, okay, that that makes more sense. And I understand why he would say that. It, it will shift your understanding. Yeah, but just to read it right off the page and take it and apply it to your modern life, right. you'll be mad at Paul, and I will understand why. Absolutely. Particularly when you see Jesus, right, <laughs> right, saying, no, 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 women are the the financial support of my ministry. Absolutely. When I need to rest and recline, right? Yeah. I'm going into the homes of women. The woman and a woman anoints my body for burial. <laughs> right? You're seeing time and time again. And whenever Jesus has these encounters, he places a certain level of affirmation. Yeah, that's good. On the service, on the yes. sacrifice, on the surrender of these yeah. women. He's saying, wherever this gospel is told, this woman's name will be remembered. Absolutely. He is completely completely committed to affirming women who serve his kingdom and help advance absolutely the name of God in the earth. Absolutely. And this is just one example of that. So every time I read that, it blesses me. Yeah. Because this is the <laughs> this is the Mary, the mother of Jesus. Yes. Start there. Then you got Salome, this is the woman who's the sons of Zebedee, yes. uh, James and John. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is the same woman who has come to him and say, hey, Jesus, when you come into your kingdom, <laughs> I, want to sit on the right. I want one of my sons to sit on your right, right one right. of them to sit on your left. Right, right. Her intentions were good, but Jesus was like, hey, I don't, uh, you, 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 know you don't know what you're asking for. <laughs> First yeah. of all, it's not for me to decide right, that. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Second of all, you don't know what you're asking for. Yeah. And they will come into my kingdom. They will. <laughs> but they're going to suffer to do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you have... Um, the woman who Jesus cast out, yeah, unclean spirits from seven demons, yeah, yeah, and she committed her life to follow him, yeah. Dude, this is so encouraging because I imagine there is a young woman, a young lady who's watching, who may be struggling with this, mm-hmm. who may me, who may feel like I have something that God has given me, yeah, but because of conversations that I've been a part of, mm-hmm. or because of what people have spoken over my life, mm-hmm. I feel like I can't speak up, right, because it will be shunned upon, mm-hmm. or I I feel like I will be you know cast out or isolated, right. but here is a prime opportunity for you to look at the lives Man. of these women who were connected, to, who walked with Jesus, yeah. And God used them to their fullest extent. Yeah. So let that be an encouragement to that young lady or that young woman who is watching. Yeah. God can use you, young woman. God can use you, young lady. The gift that God has given you, whether it's prophecy, whether it's preaching, whether it's teaching, please know that he has given it to you for a reason. Come on, man. Don't let your gender just hold you back and remain silent. Yeah. This is a prime time for you to stand up and say, thus saith the Lord. (laughs) Right. You better talk your talk. In, in the day and age of what's happening in the church now? Come on. If, man. And just imagine, and just realize <laughs> how many platforms and opportunities we are blessed with to share his word. Mm-hmm. It's not just over the pulpit. Sure. It's not in the four walls. Sure. We can literally, what we're doing right now mm-hmm. is an avenue. Mm-hmm. So you tap into that gift, young lady. Yeah. You gra- grab them friends and say, yeah. listen, I, I got something God placed on my heart. Let's let's get to this business. Yeah. We got work to this work to be done. There's lives that need to be changed, lives that need to be saved. I love it. We gotta go out there and go get them. We gotta go get them. Yeah. Man. Family, we talked about what victory is. Asked you at the beginning before we started the conversation. What does victory look like? Victory may look like resurrection. Mm-hmm. Victory may look like renewed and restored hope. Victory may look like you finding your voice. Tonight we experience, Mm. tonight we're reminded of the victory of Christ on our behalf so that we can now, for his glory, live victorious lives. Absolutely. I think we should pray, man. I think we should. Yeah. Yeah. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for victory. Thank you for conquering power. Yeah. Thank you that you, oh God, are our king, and you are a conqueror. The words of Paul in Romans chapter 8 tells us that we are more than conquerors, and we're more than conquerors because we serve the king who conquered death, hell, and the grave. I pray for every man, every woman, every child, Lord God, who is watching right now, that you would help them to experience victory 
in any and every aspect of their life. Father, I pray that someone would find their voice to go and tell just how good you've been and how good you are to a dark and dying world. I pray that where areas of our lives have experienced death, Lord God, that if it is your will, that there would be resurrection. I pray that each and every day, oh God, we would walk in resurrection power, knowing that he who is in us is greater than he who is against us. Be with us, O oh God, as we go out into this world. Help us to shine for your glory. And may you move in our lives for our good. In Jesus' name we ask it all. Amen. Amen. Let's worship. Let's worship, brother. <laughs> You say be still and know You say be still and know That I'm God You are the Lord Most High And this is how I find my parents This is how I find this is how I find my path This is how I find my path Listen, it may look together It may look like I'm surrounded But I'm surrounded by you It may look like I'm surrounded but I'm surrounded by you. Yeah. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Yeah. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Come on, say it. This is how I find my path. Say it again. This is how I find my path. This is how I find my path. This is how I find my path. This is how I find my battles. 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 It may look like it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you, the only God. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you, the Lord of Hosts. Come on. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you, yeah. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is, this is how I fight my battle. Come on. This is how I fight my battle. still and know 
He said, be still and know that I am God. Yeah. You said, be still and know. Got it all under control, because I am God. I am God. I am God. You said, be still and know. You said, be still and know. You said be still and yeah, know. He says be still and know that he is gone.